Hello, everyone. Welcome to Raw Hearted Real. I'm here today with a very special guest who needs no introduction. Aversion, how are you today? <laughs> Besides Ryan. Hello. <laughs> I'm very good, man. Thanks for having me. I know it's in a bit of a weird location, but trust me, there's a reason for it. I'll explain it. <laughs> yeah, please. You have to. <laughs> okay. Yes. I want to I wanna start first on how did you choose your artist name? I, I wish I had like this dope ass backstory, right? But I'm not going <laughs> to lie, man. I... I googled cool English words, and this was one no of the way. words that came up. And I was like, "Well, you know, that can work." <laughs> I know. I, w I wish I had a better reason. I'm sorry. But that's like the most interesting <laughs> explanation I could give right now. <laughs> <laughs> but at least did you tried it to make it? Uh, it start with a, so it can be like the first in the lineups or something. Because I, I don't know. No. It makes sense. No, no. It's like, like in hindsight, it was a nice bonus that it was part added to it. But it was literally just like I needed a new name. This one sounded cool, so ah, fuck it. You know, let's just use this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, it's a really good name. So yeah, it works. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, and when when did you start it? I mean, I know that you at least you have songs on Spotify since 2017, I think, and. Correct. But what it, what age were you? What drew you into hard style? Tell me a little bit of your backstory. Like, what's your background? So, uh, I think I started listening to hard style in 2009 or so, maybe a little, like a year later or so. I have an older brother, Denny, and he was really into hard style that time. And uh, he already went to like festivals like DEF CON 1. Um, and my uncle as well, he gave me like a CD with some burnt music on from, I don't know, if the, the real old people know to still LimeWire. <laughs> I do know exactly, it. <laughs> like, it's, exactly. So, and there was all like all sorts of tracks with like DJ Isaac, Headhunters, the book and Estefan on it. And I don't know, man. I, I was listening to that, that that CD for so long, and I was looking at the after movies for all the festivals, and I was just like, God damn it! This this type of music is so cool, and these festivals look so incredibly dope. I I, I really want to go there, and wanting to go there turned into I want to play there, which meant I had to start DJing. But then I found out if you want to play at DevCon, you got to do more than DJ. So then I started picking <laughs> up music to basically just like play their ones. Yeah, it's it's been a crazy ride ever since. I never expected it to go this hog wild. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it has been a great ride. And actually, it's funny because I don't know, like most of the artists that I have uh, looked up, like at the beginning of their careers, they usually have like mm -hmm. these songs which are not that great, you know, technically speaking. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, yeah. I actually uh, um, dive into your songs, like, from the beginning. And you actually had, like, a pretty good technique, and the songs are quite actually good. Like, do you think that um, this also is, is better for artists? Like, if you start with good quality instead of just, uh, I don't know, releasing songs at the beginning which aren't that good? Well, I mean, first of all, I appreciate you saying that, right? <laughs> And I've always just been doing stuff because I feel like it. I've never really had like any type of like education on music. It's just been a feeling type thing and learning nice. a lot from uh, working with other producers. But I feel I tell this like to smaller guys as well. Like I get it. Be uh, hard on yourself. Be perfectionistic. It's important. But don't forget, people are in it for the ride. Like. You can yeah. have one great track, but that won't sustain a career for 15 years, right? People also want to see, like, where you started from. They want to see you grow. They want to see, like, where it all leads to. They want to see the potential flourish and become reality, right? I think that's part of yeah. what makes, like, following DJs their career so, so, so gosh darn interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm still a huge fanboy of almost almost everyone I have the privilege of working with nowadays. And I don't know. It's just the coolest thing ever. It's like some type of weird reality soap or so. What's your fault? Did you catch my dream? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah. And how did you start with music production? Like, did you start uh, learning a DAW or you went to classes? H how did you start doing it? So, like every every good bedroom producer does, they illegally download FL Studio off the internet and they get going. They start to grind, right? <laughs> So, I, like I said before, I, I have never really had any education. It's just been, I really want to make hard style, which was, uh, I think that was like 2016 or so, or 2015 even, that I really started to pick it up. And at that time, you have to imagine there weren't a lot of tutorials out there or sample packs that were so rare. If you wanted to make hard style, you had to be one of those guys who had the insider knowledge of how to actually create a decent sounding hard style kick. Let alone the, yeah. the crazy music like uh, Brennan Hart and Kuhn and Headhunters were making at that time. So 
it's literally just been like trying stuff out, trial and error, working with other uh, producers that were on the, in the same league as me at that time. And I learned so much from those guys, to which I'm still like very grateful, which really helped me like get to this point. It's just about yeah, being eager and willing to, to put in the hours, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And actually, you, you have done a lot of releases, right? I mean, I think that you're one of those kind of producers that actually keep releasing music like very often, which I think is really good. Because I do know like other artists that might just release a song every two to two, three months. But I see that you have, you're steady. Like you have this, I don't know how to say it, but like you're releasing music very, very often, which I think it's, it's great. And it's good music, yeah. actually. So <laughs> oh, how do you manage? Me blush, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, but how, how do you manage to make time? Because right now, I mean, I think that since last year, you became like this huge guy in hard, the hard style scene. We, we, which ha we, we have to talk about that at some point. <laughs> but yeah. Like, how, how did it change your life? But, um, how do you manage your time? Like, yeah, with, when creating songs and all these gigs that you, that you must have right now. So when I started out, it was a bit easier. Like, there wasn't really any pressure. That's also the fun part about just starting out is, is there's no, pressure on you right there it's just about feeling the creative process having a good time and trying to make music that you you fuck with you know that you really want to show to people and um, eventually when i started getting more bookings i felt like okay i need to keep like a certain structure for myself to stay relevant as well because especially nowadays man if you don't release a track for half a year no one like has you on the top of, on the top of their head right um yeah. unless you're like a sefa or something you know but <laughs> I really tried to like uh, continue that trend in the sense of just steadily releasing music and slowly, but I've, at first I was still in, in high school when I started out. Then I had like a job on the side. So I was just doing so much stuff at the same time. And the funny part is, right, now I'm a full-time artist. I have less time than I've ever had in my entire life to hang out or chill. I have so much stuff to okay. do. You have no clue. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, yeah I can't imagine. Yeah, because now that you, you have all these things to do, I mean, and also your personal life. <laughs> I have talked with a lot of artists who tell me that they actually lost their personal life. Like they cannot hang, um, they cannot even have like relationships unless they had it like for a long time because it's really hard to keep up. Yeah, and, and I, I feel that completely. I, I got to say, I'm very privileged with the people around me. I have a very close-knit family. I have a, a friend group of about 13 guys, which I'm really close with. Uh, I have a girlfriend of almost seven years now, which we're, we're still having such a good time together. And that makes it all a lot bear, more bearable. But 100%, it, it is a very lonely life if you don't watch it and you don't take a step back to actually appreciate life itself. Yeah. You can get so swallowed with the numbers, the competition, the... I don't want to say fame. It sounds so stupid, right? But it's, I don't know. It's, it's easy to get caught up in like the side stuff. So that, that will make you forget like the, 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 the reason you started doing this and, and all the other important stuff. Like, cause it's not all about music. Music is a big part of my life, but you also got to have family. You got to have friends, you know? So yeah. Yeah. I, I feel that. And how do you think that your life has changed in the past year? Like it was a massive change after activation or, uh, or you were like on this, I don't know, like you were climbing into the hard style scene. You were getting big and it kind of felt like it was a normal, I don't know, evolution or something. Or it was just yeah, like, trajectory. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Trajectory. Yeah, we uh, like via my team, my management and that agency and label and stuff, uh, which I've been working with since the beginning. We've always said like we're aiming for a, a career of longevity. We really want to, at least I really want to do this as long as I can, because art style is my passion, it's my love. I love nothing more than this type of music, and I hope to like do this until I'm gray and old, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's like with Activation, it exploded, but beforehand, we've had a couple of tracks which garnered some attention, with which had a couple million streams. It was going steady, but this really exploded, but I think because we like took it slow and we also tried to build a foundation... That's why I feel like we're we're ready to do this for the, for in the long run. If we, of course, keep on making those bangers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it, you actually have kept making these bangers. Like after that, at least I think that for me, I have like two personal favorites. By the way, Devastation is amazing. Also, Extinction. Ah, you know. You, man. I yes, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
I'm actually really hyped to see you this Saturday on Fabric. It's going to be amazing. Ah, yeah. Man, oh, Fabric, by the way, I'm so excited. The first time. I, I was going to ask you that. It's your first time in Fabric, but not the first time in, in Madrid, or is it? Uh, uh, it's the second time in Spain, because I've had Dream Beach in... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I know where it is. Yeah, it's like on Almeria. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I've been to Spain once before, which was super cool, but I've heard so many wild stories about Fabric that I cannot wait to play there, man. Oh, I'm pretty sure that you're going to love it. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was talking about activation, all the new songs, and mm -hmm. how do you feel that it changed your life? Like, you, you, you were just telling me that you had this trajectory, everything was going fine, but then this came up, it, it exploded. And how yeah. was aversion before activation and after activation? Uh, our version is a lot more busy now after activation. <laughs> no, it's like, it's it's beautiful because I really feel at this point that I've achieved so many of my dreams already and so much more to gain. So I'm, I'm so motivated to like keep on grinding. But the unfortunate side of, I guess, all the success is that the sacrifice I have to make in my personal life, they keep on growing and getting bigger. Where like two or three years ago, I, I had the opportunity to, to attend every one of my friend's birthdays, uh, to like spend my, uh, my girlfriend's birthday, for example, with her. This time I, I won't be around because I have shows to play or I have to, I'm on tour or whatever, right? Which really sucks. But yeah. I also at the same time believe it is a necessary sacrifice because I just really want to do everything in my power to, to do the best I can so that I can look back on, on this journey, like, I did everything I could. I had a great time, but I'm happy I can take it a little more easy now, if that makes sense. Oh, actually wanted to ask you. Uh, I saw that you were going to have a back-to-back -back with Radical Redemption this Saturday. Yes. Or am uh, I... To, first of all... <laughs> no, no, no. You're, you're out of love, bro. You're absolutely yeah. right. And it's yeah. like, first of all, it's a big, big honor to, to play in the main room for the first time. But I'm also doing a solo set in, at the Gearbox hosting. So I get the best of both worlds on my first try wow. immediately and... And it's going to be incredible. Last time I played with Joey on um, uh, We Are Hardstyle. And it was so good. And he's such a big dude. I love like trying to throw him around on stage. And he just looks at me. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I think that it would be an amazing set. I'm really looking forward for it. I mean, also Radical Redemption is one of, well, I, one of my favorite artists. So I think it's going to be Same. kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah. That guy is, is really an amazing guy. It makes he makes really good music as well as you, of course, hundred <laughs> percent. And I appreciate you, man. Right? The back to back is going to be very sick. We have a new call up together as well. The did I really just forget the name of our call up? The night, the nightmare project. That's what it's called, the nightmare project. And it's like <laughs> it's it's it turned out so cool. It's such a dope blend of styles, and I, I'm sure people will absolutely love it. Oh, I'm pretty sure that everyone will. And by the way, <laughs> now that. Now that you mentioned the releases, oh, whoa, well, your collab, how does this work? Like, uh, how does the, um, the, ah, fuck, I forgot the name, the label uh, mm -hmm. determines when are you going to release each song? Like, how does this actually work? Like, on what is it based or how, yeah, how are releases uh, programmed? So it, it, it kind of depends on what you, first of all, I believe like this kind of stuff, it, it comes from the artist, right? It's about what are your goals? What are your aspirations? What do you want to? achieve and a label is just there to help you guide it like make sure all the the back end stuff is fixed like they help you fix artworks and video clips and stuff and, and send it to distributors etc um but for me what I, what my mindset was with the releases is i've seen throughout the years that i've been doing this is that the the gap between release the ideal one has really mm -hmm. shrunk at, at one point it was ideal if you release a track every eight ten to eight weeks let's say that would just be perfect okay. for the name. But now I've, I've noticed that for a version, especially with all the algorithms and, sh and stuff, I really have to release every four to six weeks to keep up the momentum, which is okay. not going to lie, is pretty hard on me because it means you have to crank out music in such a fast tempo that it's, it's almost undoable. But I have the privilege of being able to work with like so many ama amazing artists right now that it just keeps on inspiring me so that I actually feel like I could I could make that that schedule happen. Nice. Yeah. And by the way, how did you come up with activation? Like what was the process behind that song? What's the story behind it? 
Oh, man, I've, I've told this story a couple of times before in other interviews, man. It's like, it was Shockers 2022. It was the night before. It was like 4 a.m. I was slaving away in the studio and I was like, nah, I just need something new. So in like from 4 to 8 a.m. or so, I just made activation just in four hours. It was so Holy weird. Shit. Yeah, it was so fucking weird. I was just in the studio and I was, I was making like, I was, I was working on like a kick and I made it into a synth. It was so weird. And then I was like, da, 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 da. So I started looking in my kick folder, and it's uh, no joke, it's called Gated Kick Tway, uh, Gated Kick 2. So I just uh-huh. put it afterwards, the second try, and then, <laughs> and then afterwards, it just clicked. It was, it all made sense. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, it's, I, a, I, it's a wild story. It happened. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, I'm pretty, it, it just happened. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty impressed that <clears throat> such a a banger like it was the biggest song from last year and it was created like just in four hours you know it's like when you get inspiration everything works out right exactly it, 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 i mean to be fair it, like the first draft which was like the first half of the track was done in four hours the last part took me like a couple of days to figure out and also like do the the like make it all the mix down and stuff and do all the, the extra stuff to make it sound and crisp that took a little longer, but like the initial process and the first version I played at Shocker 2022 took four hours, man. And I mean, look at us now. Two years later, it's supported by Hardwell. It's like we're going all around the world. It's Life is so wild sometimes, man. I can't understand it. Yeah. Oh, my God. When Hardwell was playing it like last year at all the festivals and everything, it was really, really impressive. I mean, for you, it must have been like, I don't know, out of this world, <laughs> like having him playing this everywhere, which actually it's also a, like huge for the hard sale scene because he was playing this at every festival. Exactly. And, and the funny part is I have uh, Robert Hardwell. I have him on my WhatsApp now, which is already ridiculous to say, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I believe we'll soon be, st- uh, be working on something together. But he basically said, nice. until that time, I'm going to keep on playing activation like the stubborn dick that I am. And I'm like, Robert, I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, which has been your favorite event to play at? And it doesn't have to be like the, the biggest one, uh, like the, this kind of festival. I mean, it can be anything. Even a small place might be the, the best venue. No, I know what you mean. I, like, I, always, I think I always give pretty examples when people ask me this question. I I definitely DEFCON one last year opening the the blue was surreal because yeah. no one is accidentally in the blue at eleven AM. Um but it was it was it was packed after like twenty, thirty minutes of opening. It, that really felt like I was just playing for for like what, twelve thousand friends or so, which was so such a weird feeling. I nearly cried, man, after that set and um that one was super sick. Uh, of course, the Intense main stage debut with uh, Adjusted Mutalander was crazy, where Devastation was born as well, because that really made me realize I can do this and make friends at the same time, which is such a nice feeling. And um, yeah. um, and lastly, I would say Knockout Outdoor in Australia. That I don't know why, but that country loves activation like a snow tomorrow, man. Like every time <laughs> I play that stuff, and it goes wild. I've never heard a crowd screaming as loud as they did. That it actually that one actually made me cry after my set. Uh, you can ask him, I was like wailing on his shoulder. I was like, oh, God, what is life? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have heard that the Australians are crazy for, I mean, like the scene right there, it's pretty, pretty big. And it's kind of crazy. It's it's beautiful, man. And and it's it's just such an unreal thing to be on. You, you can go, oh, you almost can go any further away from the Netherlands than Australia, right? And to come there and be welcomed so warmly and to have people scream along your music. I don't know. How is someone supposed to feel? I still don't know to this day. (laughs) And besides Australia, what other country have you seen that has a a good scene, a hardstyle scene? So I've I've had the privilege of playing in uh, Santiago, Chile once. Uh, Oh, that was in, it was a couple of years ago, I believe. And I don't know, that that was really the first culture shock I really experienced. But the same thing as with Australia, it's so far away from home. But these people are so <laughs> expressive. They love the music so much that they, they they are all in. They'll know every track, even though at that time I was still a smaller producer, which really blew my mind. So Chile is amazing. Um, what else? I mean, uh, the Scandinavians, of course, are growing now in, uh, in numbers of parties and events and stuff. 
Um, it's just growing everywhere. And that's just the dopest thing ever. I hope to go to Mexico soon one day. Mexico seems also like one of those places that will be really, really special. Yeah, actually, the scene right now is uh, growing a lot in Mexico. So, mm. yeah, hopefully you will be there someday. I, they are actually making like these huge, um, uh, huge festivals, which are bringing like a lot of hard style artists. So I'm pretty sure that maybe soon you will be playing there and you will love it. I hope so. <laughs> I, I've seen, I've seen the footage from EDC Vegas of uh, EDC Mexico and that yeah. was really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because it was like, I don't know, maybe a week and a half ago, something like that. And it, it seemed pretty, pretty yeah. actually it, it's funny because, uh, I'm I, well, I'm from Mexico, but I have been living in Spain for the past six years. And when I arrived in Spain, uh, it was when when I started to get into hard sell. So I never yeah. saw this scene in Mexico. And right now that I'm getting into it into this, like with all these interviews and everything, I just saw that mm -hmm. the the scene is starting to get big. So I'm re I'm really happy with, uh, because of it. And I see I have seen all the people working on this, and it, it's. It's pretty good, and and it's actually gonna. I, I think that it will be like a good place uh, for hardstyle in probably around five to ten years because we have a lot of people in Mexico. We're at like a hundred and thirty million. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and 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 especially now with the rise of festivals in general, right through yeah. social media platforms like TikTok and stuff. It's let's hope this this helps our scene really like expand to the next level. That would be absolutely surreal. Yeah. By the way, what would be your best advice okay this is a tricky well not a tricky question but i want to to say a correct you. question <laughs> like what would be your best advice to new artists but thinking about the errors or the mistakes that you have made in the past like what were the worst mistakes and what would be the advice that you would give to to new artists so starting it's like an old man here giving advice to the younger generation already right <laughs> No, if I have to give like a couple points of advice, first of all, really, and I mean really, try to enjoy the ride. It, 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 it time has got moving by like this, especially in this industry, because it's like highlight after highlight after highlight. And if you don't enjoy it now, you will regret it later. So really try to stand still with all the things you're achieving, no matter how big or small they are. Be proud of yourself. Um, also, don't be naive. I was very naive in the beginning of my career. And I am I'm absolutely blessed to have found a team that I'm still working with to this day, to this day. Because if I got in touch with a party that might have had more malevolent intentions with me, I don't know if it would have gone the same way. So be careful. There are people out there who are are willing to sacrifice your career to make a quick buck. So be yeah. careful. Enjoy the moments that you, you that you can. Be proud of yourself and. And work your balls off, boy. Come on. It's time to get that grind on. Guys, <laughs> nice, yeah. I also think that uh, artists should be aiming to be, to have like a unique sound, don't you think? Because right now, the industry, what I have seen or what I can hear is what I can listen to, is that mm, a lot of the new artists are trying to sound like like a version, like, uh, like you know, like this artist, like dual damage. Like they, they're yeah. trying to imitate this artist instead of creating a new sound and i don't know I, I don't know if the trends are like good for these new artists because instead of focusing on creating like a unique sound they are trying just to copy the other ones around yeah i mean it, it's it's always been like that also like 10 years ago it was exactly the same everyone was really trying to create like that noise controller sound um <laughs> I, look I feel like it's it's good because because of all the experimentation that has been done, it's a very free industry, right? You can you can go crazy with the music. There's not, not a lot of boundaries that are too far, let's say. The problem is that with everything going so extreme, I feel like when everything's extreme, nothing is extreme. So it's kind of like a race to the bottom. And I feel like the fun will be sucked out of like the harder sound in a couple of years if we keep it. I hope to see like also more innovative uh, movements in, in just hard style in general. I, I'd love to see more stuff like future noise, but maybe more ingrained with like the modern sound, for example, right? That's why I, for example, I, I try to do my part in the sense of working with those legendary artists and trying to sit, maintain the quality that they bring, but giving it a fresh touch and not being scared to like try something new and, 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 and go a little extreme. It, it is party music after all. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. 
I, I hope to see the more of like the merging of like uh, the, the two subgenres, let's say. And I would love to see like more experimentation with sound design, so that not everybody aims for the same type of kick. But a great example for for example is the Headhunters, the new solo track. I don't know if you know what I mean. Yeah, Live Forever. Uh, it's called I believe. But it, it's not the solo one. I, I think the last one that it was uh, by himself. No, not, not it's, no. It's not released. It's not released. He played it at oh, okay. last year. And you, oh, should, if okay. you haven't checked, if you haven't checked it out, man, f- please check it out no. on YouTube. I, I think it's called Head Under's Live Forever. That man has really reinvented himself again after like being in this scene for many, many years. And that's the type of music I feel like I would be craving as a new hardstyle fan. But that's just my two cents. You know, I love hardstyle still in the way it is now. I love the old hardstyle. I love where hardstyle's going. Uh, and I hope we're all going to create like the best music we can. Yeah. Actually, uh, about that song from Headhunters, I don't know if... I, I'm sure that I heard it because I was there at the at DEFCON 1 last year at the Blue Stage. Yeah. But I, I don't know which one you're talking about. I, I need to, to, to check it out. <laughs> For you, what's the most challenging part of being a hardstyle DJ and producer? Ah, uh, Jesus. That's a tough one. Uh, the, the hardest part, I think, is sometimes dealing with the, the the criticism not that i have a lot of critic uh, criticism lately it's just that people in hardstyle are very protective over their genre they're very passionate they really really care about it and um, because of that if something uh, is if a change happens which they do not prefer then they can become quite defensive and aggressive towards the artist trying new things that's why people are also a little scared i believe you know keep on innovating I think setting aside the expectations of others and really just creating out of your own heart and not being scared of what other people think about it is it's uh, it, it, that was one of the hardest steps I've had to, to make. And I'm still making that step every day because sometimes I feel myself being not vulnerable, but like I'm susceptible to criticism. Let's say it can really like ruin my day if I if I read like a couple of mean comments and I really should get my head out of that space, you know, just create for me. It's that's all it's about. Yeah, actually, that happens to a lot of people. Like, I don't know, but artists tend to be sensitive, like, <laughs> in all kinds of ways. And it, it's like, well, I have heard, like, Aaron, a tip that I would give you, which I have heard from, from other artists, is that they don't read any comments at all. Not even the good ones, you know? Because both both comments can affect you in different ways. Because most of the times you will have, like, I don't know, 150 good comments and then just one bad comment. But that and that will that fuck up your day. That will fuck you yeah, up, bro. <laughs> exactly. I don't know why, but we tend to put a lot more attention on the bad stuff <laughs> than the good stuff. So yeah, yeah, I think that we always have to yeah. just try to ignore like this kind of comments. Just do what I, I mean. It's always nice to to see good comments, but uh, it's I also not good to... for you. I I don't believe like the yeah. good comments are also good for you because it's such a. I, I can honestly say that I feel like it's some type of drug in the sense of like it gives you such a dopamine yes. rush that it's like easy to become addicted to it. Like my screen time on my phone is abysmal, bro. I think I am I have like a screen time of like 12 hours a day, which is like, that's not, yeah, that's not health. But, but that's also because social media is such an integral part. And I do like most of my video editing for like social media. I do it myself on my phone. I do, I do everything okay. myself. Right, all the content I have looked at, videographers and stuff, but it's just it's so time consuming. But it's also so addicting. I find myself if I'm not stimulated for like 15 minutes, first thing I do is <laughs> open up the phone, see my notifications. Right? It's uh, it's it's double edged sword, let's say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. And what do you enjoy more, performing or producing? Uh, if you would have asked me this like three years ago, I would have probably said uh, performing. Because performing okay. was like such a new world, you know, so stimulated by it. But if you if you'd ask me now, I, I think I'd say producing. I lo- don't get me wrong, right? I love performing. It's such such a surreal moment to be standing in front of like fifteen thousand people and playing your new track. It's so dope. But I find myself having more joy in actually the creative process and creating the music. Playing it is just a bonus. Let's say it's just that's just like the reward. But I oh. really enjoy just the, the struggle and, and the, the process of like, what are we going to do now? How, how are we going to attack this? From what side or from what perspective are we going to work on it? So I think I would say a producer. Okay. And do you do you have some kind of methodology to produce your songs? Like, do you, I don't know, the creative process? Do you have something established or how do you make a song? Mm, no, nah, not really. 
like I've tried to like make handles for myself to like be more productive and more effective, but I find that just being having like the adverse effect. It's just for me, it's so weird. I just have to like be on my computer and just I have I have ADD, right? So my brain goes like from left <laughs> to right. So I now my internet behavior is exactly the same. It's YouTube, then it's like I'm I'm on Splice, then I'm on a vocal website, then I'm I'm answering emails. And if I just get that one trigger, it doesn't matter where it comes from. Then I'm just hooked. Then I just know I mean, okay, this is what I have to do. It's so weird. It's like there's a blueprint in my head. It just unfolds the moment I hear the trigger. It's so strange. Wow. Yeah, and that you're like, you just get inspiration and then you just start working on the song and it works out. Well, it, but the, don't you get like, um, like these creative blocks? Like you, you, you cannot just finish a song at some point? Yeah, I mean, starting a song is always the easy part, right? I mean, that's where the, the creative process is. And then it's fun because it's new and fresh. And my ADD brain is like, oh, shiny, new project. I like this. So it's hard to like <laughs> actually finish stuff. But it's that's where the, I guess, the work aspect of having this as a career comes in. Because you have to, which is fine for my, because it also helps me develop a little bit of discipline. But I, I love creating new projects more than finishing them. That's for sure. <laughs> And by the way, which are your favorite songs about yourself? Like, what are the songs that Aversion would recommend from Aversion? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Man, I, I, this always feels so douchey, right? To just recommend your own songs. Well, if I would have no, to say... I mean, it, 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 they are the songs that represent you, you know? Like, if you would say, yeah. like, I don't know, Aversion is made of these three songs, which ones would be? Oh, gosh. Oh, God. Oh, man, that's such a deep question. If I have to pick three, yeah. I'm going to say I I still, I'm so proud of the Shockers anthem. I would definitely recommend that one. Oh, and it's really good. Yeah. It feels kind of weird, right? Because Activation is my biggest track, but I'm not sure if I, I guess I would have to recommend it because it's like, it's still very aversion, I would feel. So Activation, the Shockers anthem, and, oh God, this is such a hard question. I would say either the Future Noise Call-Up Revolution. Because I, I mm -hmm. really want to keep my melodic side alive as well. Or no. yeah, so for my third song is Shockers. It's like the Shockers anthem, activation, and I would say either devastation or revolution. One of the one of those two. Because I love okay. like the 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 meaning behind devastation, like the friendship. But music wise, I feel like revolution is one of my best tracks. Hundred percent. Yeah. Nice. Okay, Ed, what do you think about the evolution of hard style like nowadays? Like, you know, it has changed a lot in the past few years. And I don't know where it is heading, but I do know that every time, I mean, like, it's going very rough. Like, it's going to the, yeah, to this more raw, raw kind of sound. So what do you think about the evolution that it has had during the past years? I, I think... The evolution is, like I said, I think it's a good thing because it gives way more room for experimentation. It feels like such a freer musical landscape. Like, you can really come up with some weird shit and no one will be like, eh, what, what the hell? They'll just appreciate the fact that you're trying to do something new. But the, the, the downside, I feel, is that everything is so split up right now, right? I love melodic hard style just as much as I love the harder segment, but... It feels like everyone is just chasing, which makes sense because it is an industry, but everyone is just chasing like being the the number one, the biggest DJ. So I feel like there should be way more room for all types of hard style to be like listened to and everyone should just do their own thing. Sometimes it just feels like some kind of rat race where everyone just wants to be the, the hardest guy right now. I just really want to see people like explore creative boundaries and just make dope shit you know i hope people still feel free enough to to keep on creating and not try and defend positions or just yeah just try and follow routes that have already been paved like make your own be weird do it out one thing that no one else does I, i'd love to see more of that yeah yeah i'm completely i completely agree with that and actually i think that we're heading to to a sound that it's we're hitting like a um a wall in terms of hardness and i think that this is going to change soon like i actually i'm starting to listen to well to yeah to more euphoric kind of songs i, I wouldn't say completely euphoric but i think that the euphoric um vibe is kind of coming back sure and and, and euphoric hard song in general is, is definitely making a comeback i mean look at, at guys like jay reeves throwing their own part in the the mill in tilburg which was huge um i know like also other euphoric guys are really coming up with albums 
they are collaborating also with raw guys to create like that that mixture which i personally so for really it, yeah exactly yeah. whatever you want to call it i i really that's my i think still my favorite type of hard sell so Euphoric is doing great, and and I, I it's always ups and downs right in this scene. I believe right now we we've hit like such a wall in terms of hardness. I think we're gonna go adjust the quality with uh, with everyone a bit more. Everyone's gonna focus more on like okay, we've had the funky times. Let's make sure it actually <laughs> sounds good again. And then after like yeah. maybe one or two years again, someone comes up with something new that's that's innovating and then it catches on, and then we have another hype. It's just, that's how it always has been. I've said exactly the same thing uh, with the side trans kicks. I said to my friends at that point, like, "Yeah, we can't go any harder with with, with like what Sub Zero parts are going to doing." And then just the Za kicks came along, and now the, the <laughs> dual damage gated kicks, and it's like, "Yeah, okay, we could go a little harder if we wanted to." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Someone always finds a way to make it harder, <laughs> which is great. It's called art style. It's not called soft style, after all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, I want to ask you. Uh, the, I don't. I don't know if you want to uh, to answer this or not. But what do you usually request on your rider for mm -hmm. a for a gig? Oh, yeah, I'm. 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 I can be completely open about it. I'm not a diva. Oh, I am a bit of a diva, but I don't ever request anything really, really weird or something. I think the weirdest thing mm -hmm. that's on my rider is probably like an iced te macchiato or so. Or no, sorry, it's <laughs> a coffee that they call that we call the dirty ole because I had it for the first time in Germany with uh, Ole from Riot Shift. And it's uh, an iced chai latte with a double shot of espresso and oat milk, which is like so fucking specific, right? So we would just yeah. point that on for shits and giggles. And then I was playing in Australia. I shit you not. This was like on a farm somewhere outside of the city. They bring me the fucking latte. And it's like, I don't even want coffee at this point, but I'll drink it out of respect <laughs> for the organization just getting it. Of course. <laughs> But oh, furthermore, it's just, yeah, it's 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 nothing, it's nothing too special. It's just it's just some some drinks, uh, maybe a bit of food, like a sandwich or so. But I don't want to be a bother too much, like uh, to to organizations. Okay. And do you usually party before or after your gigs, or you're like more of a chill person? No, I I, I love to party. Lately, I've been more chill because like I I play every weekend now multiple shows, and it's quite tough yeah. on my body and mind. So. Like, if I have tough touring weekends, you won't find me partying that much. But if I have, for let's say, for example, Fabric this weekend, I have uh, a game uh -huh. it before, and then I'm flying with Radical on his jet to Madrid. And then that's my uh -huh. only show that weekend. And then I'm leaving for Japan on Monday. So that means Saturday on Sunday night, it's party time, baby. We get fucked up on the dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, then I want to have at least a beer with you on fa at Fabric. <laughs> That's a deal, my brother. <laughs> it's a deal. <laughs> I want to ask you, have you had any memorable or fun experiences with a fan during an event? Uh, I've, had, I've had a lot of crazy times with fans, that's for sure. Like, everyone is just fucking crazy at those parties, man. It's, it's so wild. Like, what would be the weirdest thing? Oh, God, I, I've had so many weird encounters, but they, they slip my mind right now. I would say, <laughs> oh yeah, I remember it. I remember. It. Yeah, I was in Australia. I was playing at a club, and uh, in that club, there was like it was an Asian club. It was a very uh, it was called Fiat Fall. Shout out to Ken, by the mm -hmm. way, great great club owner. But that guy, uh, uh, he throws those events, and because it like is influenced by a lot of Asian culture, there's a lot of like drinking tables going around, people spending a lot of money, having like big bottles. It's like a status thing, right? So I start playing there, and I already feel like, yo, this this. This ain't really my crowd, let's say, for hardstyle. So I start playing, and it still went off. It still went incredibly well, surprisingly. And this guy, one guy comes up to me, and he just hands me a hundred Aussie dollars, like a like a tip. Yeah, yeah. And it says like he's just like he wants to give it to me. Like I'm okay, thank you. And he's like it's like thank thank you. I fe I felt like a, I needed a shower after that, but I felt like such a whore. <laughs> Okay, that's really, really weird. <laughs> yeah, that was so fucking just weird, right? So I, was, uh, I guess that would be the weirdest experience. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and now I want to ask you, what is the set that you have enjoyed creating or performing live the most? Um, I think so far, the one I've enjoyed most were both the Defcon Blue opening, because it was so special, and the Shockers uh, live set from 2023, where I was the anthem creator. Um, that one, 
was so special because it was so much hard work and not everything went perfect. Like my preparation took so much more time than I intended it to have, but it all came together so beautifully on stage. Like I had E-Force on for the first time for the call up. I had the boys of dual damage on for extinction while I wasn't released yet. Uh, unfortunately, fucking Bram Mutilator was too late at my set to actually join us for Devastation. But Marco and me, we danced for him as well. But that whole set and the reaction and the, the playing the anthem, those are moments where you really feel like all the hard work pays off. And it's, I will never forget those nights. Those were really, really memorable for me. Do you have any rituals or lucky charms that you always carry with you at events? Or do you do like some kind of, I don't know, like... Yeah, like a ritual before going to on the stage. Let me safely reach in the back of my car, because that's where my backpack is. Uh, let me show you something. Okay. This one is actually from my girlfriend. I even leave it to bring a good luck. It's like a little teddy bear. You see like the orange fluff wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she put that one day on my on my backpack and it's like, this is for good luck. And then she gave me a kiss before a show. And I was like, oh, that's mine now. That, <laughs> that, 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 I will keep that one in the game, you know? <laughs> <laughs> So I, I guess just, I don't know, I have that one for good luck. But furthermore, it's just being in at the stage in time to actually do some breathing exercises because I still to this day, I, I get very nervous before playing. It's uh, it's really? a scary thing. Whoa. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, not, it's not maybe nervous is the right word, but I want it to go well so bad. And I'm, I'm just nervous if everything's going to go well. It's just a bit of experience. Like I, I didn't have that many like fuck ups in my career yet. Like pl putting off uh, the DJ player, let's say for example, or accidentally pressing pause. I've had that like <laughs> twice in like seven years or so. So maybe that's okay. what I'm still scared for. But once you get exposed to that more and more, you'll just be like ah, fuck it, we'll figure it out, you know. But until that time. <laughs> I mean, and even if it happens, people are just going to be like, whoa, I don't know. It's not, not, not a big deal. You know, I have been. Exactly. Exactly. As, I'm just, a, a crowd, I'm just too perfectionistic. Man. A lot of events where that happens and it's just, it happens. It's like everyone can make a mistake. Exactly. Amen. Hey. Amen. Uh, yeah. And by the way, what do you actually like doing besides music? Like, what do you actually do on your free time? So I, I love, I love drawing. I love playing tennis. I love playing soccer. I love, I've recently really found my passion for working out. Um, <laughs> there's so much cool. I love gaming. I especially love like the older games like Pokemon and stuff. I've, I'm such a nostalgia gamer. I've recently bought my PS5 though. So I am looking into the newer titles. But if I have to pick a couple things, I'd say gaming, drawing, working out. And yeah, I don't know. Just listening to music in general. It's, it's still so much fun. Wait, did we get that or did the, did the internet just fuck it up? They, they turned it was fucked up, but I just went it. Okay, but don't worry. It's it's there. It's there. <laughs> oh, my, my God. I will have to. You want, yeah, you want to know like, something hello. funny, man? You you want to you yeah, no. know something funny? I've I've been so deep in this conversation and I've actually driven like 20 kilometers past the exit I had to take. So now I'm almost, uh, <laughs> I, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not close to home anymore. That's for sure. <laughs> Mom, pick me up. I'm scared. <laughs> By the way, okay, you have to tell me the story behind behind this. Why are you on your car? So, okay, so I was driving to Reavers. I was all by myself because all my friends were busy. And uh, I kid you not, like three weeks ago, I was going to tweak a TV. My front huh? right tire just exploded. It just it, it it was fucked up. It exploded. It was I had to like get it fixed by the traffic help, I guess, from the Netherlands. So that got fixed. I was on my way to reverse the, on Friday, and then my left front tire fucking exploded. So I had to call the no same way. guys again, same office, same area where it happened. So they were like, hey, good to see you again. I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the reason why I had to pick it up now, because I had like a rental car, but you only can keep that for four days, and I had to deliver it now. And I've had meetings during the day, so you can imagine where all my time goes, right? It's 9 a.m. and I'm in the middle of buttfuck nowhere right now. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> holy shit. Yeah, never a dog the woman, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, at least, at least you, I mean, I don't know if you're kind of a workaholic, because for example, I am. So I enjoy, like, I mean, if I do enjoy what I'm doing, I'm always fine. I, I don't feel like, you know, uh, oh, I'm, I really, I don't have any time for myself. I mean, the only one that suffers is my girlfriend. She suffers because I'm always doing something. <laughs> But besides that, I actually enjoy it, like being... Uh, busy most of the time yeah i feel you I, i'm definitely a workaholic myself and my girlfriend also suffers greatly under that that's for sure 
I'm not, but I'm not gonna lie. Uh, lately, I've really been looking more into like giving myself more headway with like relaxing because I'm not gonna lie. It, it, I've gotten to points last year where I was really like, I don't know if I can keep this up for two more years because it's just everything comes at the same time. It's it's so so hectic. So I really want to like that's one of my um, plans for 2024 to also try, even though we're doing more than ever before. Take a step back sometimes and try and like also give yourself the rest you need because I believe if I keep up doing this in a, in a not smart way and working too hard, which you can do, I will probably get like a burnout within the next two years, and that's the last thing I want. The agency, of course, also doesn't want that, so we got to be careful oh. ourselves. Oh my god! And the festival season is coming, which I guess it has to be like crazy, right? If I have multiple weekends with like six shows. Weekends with six shows. On the same weekend. Yep. How how you can do that? Like they are all like twenty kilometers from each other or how does no, that work? No, that's like multiple countries as well. It's fucking ridiculous. I believe like um one in the one that comes to mind is one with five, I believe in what is it, July or something, where it's like a show in Scotland on Friday and then it's like on the Saturday I have three shows in the Netherlands and then on Sunday there's another gig in Germany or so. Which is Holy like that's a, that's a great time. That's just a whole day of driving around, playing an hour, being sweaty, and then putting another shirt on. So, but, oh, look, this is playing at the highest level. I shouldn't sound like such a bitch, man. It's it's, it's great. I love it, but it's it's happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know, but I do know from other artists that that the worst part is actually this: like having all these gigs in such a, a like a short amount of time and having to travel like most of the times, not getting enough sleep. And or sleeping like at weird times uh, because I, I don't know. Uh, I guess that in the Netherlands, it's not like, for example, here in Spain, that most of the festivals are during night. I think that in the Netherlands during the summer, most of the festivals are held during the day, right? Yeah, most of them are, but the, to this day, there are still a lot of like night parties. And okay, look, I don't, I don't mind them, but it is, it is just such a hassle because your whole Sunday is just poof, gone. Yeah. Yeah, so I definitely. I mean, I was for day uh, parties. Yeah, I, I'm gonna ask you the same that I asked to the strikers, and it's what do you prefer, day festivals or night festivals? I can guess their answer. <laughs> <laughs> Which one do you think it was? <laughs> it, it, it has to be night parties. <laughs> Actually, no. They they said that before it was night parties, but uh, for I don't know for the past few years they said that they prefer having the day, daylight parties, like the daylight festivals, because they have uh, the Sunday. And if they are not tired when the festival ends, they can go party somewhere else. Ah, <laughs> uh, they're all just a bunch of pussies, man. They're getting old now. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, how is it growing in the Netherlands? I mean, like, uh, as a hardstyle fan, does, is hardstyle, like, a big part of the culture, like, the music culture? Or is it just like, I mean, it's, I don't know. I know that it's not me, but <laughs> is it like a big part of the music, musical culture? Yeah, it is a hundred percent. And especially because of, um, I mean, it is still, but it's different. Uh, you have like the big festivals, which really still luckily represent all, all segments of hard style, let's say. Um, but you can tell like, especially in the Netherlands, when you're talking like the club scene, everything is really, really mm -hmm. moving towards like the harder sound and it, it, it will be hard to find club shows for example with like a wild styles on the lineup for example you it will mostly be like raw guys from the upcoming segment etc so it still plays okay. a, big, a big role but it's just it's just it's just different i feel like back in the days every weekend you would have like a head under wild styles new controllers future knows whatever show right but nowadays it's mostly like and good for them, like the upcoming guys, like a Hard Destiny, uh, Unload, um, Heavy Resistance. There's so many cool upcoming guys, and they're getting so many shows now, which is dope. Which is dope, but it is a different mm -hmm. landscape than it was like five years ago, for sure. Okay. By the way, which are your favorite artists? I, I want you to tell me your favorite artists, like for the for your whole life, and also like uh, newcomers that you think that will make it big or that you like a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, if I have to pick my favorites. I probably say definitely Vertal Mace. I love what he's doing, and his voice is so good. His tracks are amazing. Uh, um, also, Willem Headhunters, of course. Still, I don't know what it is with that guy, but maybe I'm just a fanboy. But he still, for some reason, really feels to me like the king of hardstyle. Like I know it, 
and um, yes. and Sub Zero projects for all the innovative stuff they're doing. Those oh are God, yeah. powerhouses and all the new live acts and all the work they're putting in. I, I I admire them very greatly for that. Is they are a big example. And then uh, yeah, of course the newcomers, the the baby boys in the beginning of the scene, huh? I'd say my favorites are 100%. Like I said before, Hard Destiny is one of my favorites. He did actually a remix for me for uh, Global Revolution, which we played at Get Wrecked for the first time together, which was super cool. Um, and furthermore, yeah, I mean, I know Dual Damage are already very big. It's weird to call them newcomers, right? But they haven't been working for yeah, longer than a year. Yeah, exactly. It's like they just have been out there for a year and they are fucking huge like i don't even know how that happened i mean i know because they are great but <laughs> it's like how how can you do that it's I, exactly I don't any other artists that have done that like okay let's call them new additions to the scene i think that's a more fair way of of like categorizing <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it's 100 percent dual damage hard destiny also uh on load yeah there's uh sanctuary as well does some really cool stuff I try to stay as, as invested as possible with like the, the newer generation as well, because that's where the future lies. And there's a lot of cool stuff uh, being built right now. So I have, I have high hopes for where, where our scene is going. Yeah, yeah. It's actually, it, it looks pretty bright. Uh, actually, here in Spain, I do know a lot of artists, and most of them are pretty good. It's like, it's amazing. Like, I don't know if some Spanish the artists are getting into the Netherlands. I don't think so, because the Netherlands had like a, billion artists there <laughs> but oh, I, I mean I we have we have the strikers i mean we, we still got to deal with that shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my god they're amazing i'm actually uh eager for for this saturday it's gonna be an amazing day i'm 100 percent oh. sure it's gonna be incredible and i can't wait for the taste of that third first cold beer man oh yeah i'm craving it <laughs> by the way <laughs> you usually party party at the places that that you play like Whenever you're not playing, are you around the people or something, or you you prefer to stay on the backstage? No, I, I I prefer the party way more. And people think for some reason the backstages are where the parties, and it is so not. It is so boring back there. It's 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 almost like an office space where you have to like watch what you do. You have to be careful. <laughs> But when you go on the festival grounds, that's where my, my heart lies. That's where you can really party and, and, and enjoy the crazy production. It's just that it depends on the timing, right? If I have uh, a, a, two shows after that or I have to like fly early back tomorrow, I won't drink because then I'll, I'll, I'll oversleep for, for a show. And that's just, that's the worst thing you can do. So, yeah. Most I, of the times you'll be Saturday. Dance floor, though. <laughs> yeah. On this Saturday, are you staying in Madrid or you are leaving like early or something? I believe we have a late slide back. If I checked everything correctly with my agent, and if so, I'm going to be drinking everything. <laughs> <laughs> everything. <laughs> okay, that's going to be really, really fun. It's going to be way too fun, man. <laughs> yeah, I want to see you some, somewhere in the, the like inside the, all the crowd. 100%, man. Of course, like shoot me a message. First beer is on me. That's a deal. Okay. I also want to ask you what what's your favorite festival, but not like to play at, just as a guest. Like you have attended as a guest and you loved it. Ah, uh, well, this might be nostalgia, but there was this one really small festival at one point in the middle of the Netherlands. It was called Primal, and it, it only happened for like two editions or so, and it was it was never sold out. It was just it was just a line with upcoming raw dudes and a mix of like the bigger guys. And I don't know why, but I just had such a great time there. That was so, so good to experience. And I think I would say also Intense and Defcon, of course, because they the, the, the hospitality there is just incredible. Like the, the, the production and everything, you really feel that you're being spoiled with everything, every hour of work they've put in, right? So definitely those three parties. Okay, nice. I, I don't know why, but most of the crowd, like, yeah, the public loves decibel i mean i like it I, actually last year i went to decibel and defcon i would say like that like if about decibel and stuff of course man i love decibel as well and i get why because i'm not gonna lie the campsites of of of, of defcon in intense are like pretty flat they're just grass fields right even though they they do a lot of like uh, uh dressing up to make the terrain better but you just can't beat that forest in which you stay in Decibel. It just has a magical vibe. I don't know what it is. 
it's just luck of the location, I think. And that makes it, I think, so much more enjoyable as a weekender. Yeah, I think that the location at Decibel is like the best one. Yeah, every, everything about Decibel is quite good. For example, I love Defcon and I'm actually going this year again. But the only problem that I can see is that the smaller stages, or at least I can remember uh, one, I think it was the silver stage, which changed name at Sunday. I don't know. So I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, be 100% sure of the name of the stage, but it didn't have like the, uh, a good sound system. So that kind of fucks up like the experience a little bit if not all the stages have like a good sound system. Because, I mean, in the hard music, the sound system is like probably the most important thing. And 100%. You could have zero production yeah. and good speakers and that would be enough. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, but but still, I think I I prefer Defcon. Well, I don't think I prefer Defcon. I don't know. It's just the vibe, like the history behind it. I don't know. It feels like a uh, man. I'm a sucker it's, too for that shit, man. It's it's yeah. like that feeling of being <laughs> yes. part of the tribe. I'm a sucker for it. I eat that shit a lot. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, I'm a victim of the marketing, <laughs> and I feel it same. in my heart. Same. Same. I am a warrior. A weekend warrior, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, okay, Robin, I think that I'm going to make you the last question, mm -hmm. which is my favorite one as well. And I hope that we can have a, a second part uh, in a more quiet place for the next yeah, time. Yeah, 100%. I'm so sorry for <laughs> like the location. No, don't worry. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. I really, really appreciate your time. Like, I know that you are very busy. Uh, when I was talking with your manager... It was like, oh, yeah. I, I think I started talking with your manager like five months ago or something like that. <laughs> so I was really hope, hoping uh, for this moment. So, yeah. Oh, man, okay. we're so fucking make... terrible. Sorry for making you yeah. so <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm really grateful that, you, that you're giving me your time. Of so, course. Uh, I'm going to make you the last question. And it is, how would you like to be remembered in the hard style scene? That's actually a question I think about myself a lot. That really keeps me awake. What is my legacy? What am I... What am I doing? You know, it's, it's just, yeah, I'm doing it, but what am I doing? What am I really trying to do? I hope I can be remembered as someone who tore down boundaries, both music wise, but also industry wise. Um, I, I'm not at any of like the giant agencies. I really work from a creed of like, if I'm good, I will get booked. I work my ass off for that. And I hope that inspires not only the new generation, but also the whole industry to, to handle everything fairly, to be compensated for what you're worth, to uh, also think out of the box collaboration wise. Because I remember when I was so big uh, into listening into Heart Cell, there were so many collabs on my bucket list. Like I would, would have loved to see that just never happened. And I found that such a shame. So I really hope I, I can inspire other producers like work with someone outside of their uh, field of work, let's say. I mean, for example, I still would love to see like a Headhunters and Deester product or a Headhunters and Futuroid or a Deester and Futuroid. Those have never happened. But now I've worked with both Deester and Futuroid. So I'm, I'm secretly implementing that. So I was like, <laughs> you know, I was like, hey, you know, that the, the Deester guy is pretty great. Maybe we should make a call up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good idea. <laughs> exactly. But it, I, I guess to get back at the question, I just want to be remembered as someone who followed their heart and, and who gave it everything they have, uh, had the luxury and the pleasure to achieve a lot of their dreams and, and just try to move our music forward in the direction that's better for everyone. That I would love to be remembered like that. Perfect. Ed, I completely forgot about asking you this, and I will ask it now. <laughs> but yeah. How was Reverse? Oh, <laughs> yeah, bro. Reverse was fucking wild. <laughs> Man, it was with uh, with Act of Rage. First, we were supposed to play our first back-to-back -back at Carnival Festival, which got canceled, unfortunately. But we did it now at oh. Reverse, and it was so good. It was so good. We played main stage for the first... Uh, at least, it was my first time on the main stage. And, um, and I don't know, Reverse is so huge. Sport Palace is such a giant venue. Which is just so super cool to play. I, I gotta be honest, I, I think music wise, we were put on a little late because we were put on like after uh, Warface, Ray from the Grave, and Deesterp and Fertile, Best of Both Worlds. And yes, I agree, we make our music. I think if you compared music wise, it would have made sense to e uh, either put us before that or maybe in between. Before, so let's say. Yeah, yeah, something like that. But it didn't, it didn't like, lessen the joy that we had or the crowd because it was still packed 
still such a great vibe. So I think I, I hope to be back next year. That would be amazing. Oh, I'm pretty sure you will. And actually, it's one of the festivals that I want to go the most. I don't know why I haven't been there. But also, I remember on the tw- on 2020, uh, I was like watching all these sets from Rebirth and that got me hyped and got me through the to the COVID. <laughs> so it yeah, was actually... Man. Yeah, like this pretty the production. Cool. Yeah, I can tell you, bro, the production of Reverse is unreal. This weekend as well, if you see like all the lead, bar, like the pictures don't do it justice. It was so large. It was so well produced. So hats off to Basie fans and nice. Reverse. That was incredible. Yeah, I will have to go next year. Hopefully, <laughs> do it, and then we'll grab another beer there. <laughs> oh, perfect. That sounds like a plan. <laughs> okay, Robin. Well, thank you a lot for your time. Really, I really appreciate it. I know that you're <laughs> very busy and <laughs> hopefully we can have another conversation uh, on a more stable internet connection. <laughs> yeah, that's but a thing you promise, think... man. Thanks again for having me. It means a lot. No, thank you. I think it was pretty, pretty cool. Everyone that has been watching this, please understand that we were, we were running on a not so stable internet connection. So if you, I don't know, hear something weird, <laughs> it wasn't our fault. <laughs> Just trust me, we're going to have to do this another time and we'll make up with some proper studio equipment. That's a promise. <laughs> Perfect, Robin. So thank you very much again and see you on Saturday. See you on Saturday, brother. Have a good night. <laughs> have a good night. And thank you everyone for watching this and please subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye.